Ooh. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Show. Today we've got something very exciting, especially if you know what I like, you know, you watch my channel. Today we've got the Odroid Go, which is a do-it-yourself handheld uh, gaming system. And just to show you, I bought it from Lilliput UK for the grand sum of £33 and 29 pence. With PMP it came to 43 pounds. So it's quite expensive. They do call it the $35 unit, but in the UK, uh, you know, it does seem to cost a little bit more. But let's not hold that against them. It's still 33 quid, and that could be a lot of fun for a lot of people. And the reason I bought this is not just because I need another Game Boy style thing in my life, but because it's a sort of open source platform. And I'll show you why as we go through, but for me, it means I can make other things out of this or use this as an interface to other things, which is very exciting because it saves me having to build something to do that, to be honest with you. So these are all the pieces that aren't um, any instructions in the box, I've just noticed. So shall we try to make this without instructions? I think the answer is yes, because if you're at home, you're going to do the same. So there's a power cable for charging. Just going to get all the bits out of the packets. Power cable for charging and it's a USB micro. Not the, you know, the USB-C. I'm kind of hoping more and more things have the C now because we're kind of invested in that. Quite a fat battery. A 1200 milliamp hour 3.7 volts and that's, that's a good old size on that one. This is the main board. Oh, now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on this main board because I want to show you the special, special thing. So here's an on-off switch. So I'm guessing that's the on-off switch. A connector. It says CON2, so I don't know what that's for. Maybe there's a second joystick controller, battery, speaker, and this is for the screen. There's a screen connector. Power. That's a USB, and that's a uh, SIL. F023S. It's probably a power controller chip, that one handling the USB charging stuff for the battery. So it's probably the whole charging circuitry is on that. And this is a 10 pin, 10 bit, or however you want to call it, 10 pin GPIO port. But the main thing that provides this unit with all of its wondrous power, and the reason I'm interested in it personally, is this. And it's an ESP32W Rover. And I think that's actually Wi-Fi on there. So you've seen previous projects like the RetroNet where I've used the other ESP modules. So there are basically a module that contains a Wi-Fi chipset, a uh, ARM type chip with running, say, Lua or has a Lua interpreter, things like that. So they're really good for projects and I've used them all over. But if you think of this, where you've got basically something that's emulating games and it's driving speakers and GPIO and a screen, using that chip makes a hell of a lot more sense to me in my future projects. So that's why I'm so interested in this. This is almost like the demonstrator for that technology for me. That's at least how I justify it to myself. But you'll be seeing, if you watch any of my live streams where I do the live design streams to sort of design gadgets, I may well start using that chip because it just means any gadget I make all of it, you know, automatically will have a really nice big screen, uh, Wi-Fi, good uh, GPIO, good sort of controls. You can see you've got up, down, left, right, select, start, and then four additional switches on here. So there's plenty of GPIO off that. And not only that, I'm sure it's got spy bus and I squared C on these. So if, we, if it does, that bad boy is gonna be very popular in future designs. You'll see that getting used everywhere, I promise you. Okay, so we've got the uh, buttons. We might as well just cut them out. Just your standard D-pad. But it's keyed. It's got a nice little keyway there, and then the top there, you see it as a notch. It means it can only go in one way. Perhaps I'm almost tempted just to put them in, but I'm not going to. It's like making a model. I do like this. There's a sliding power switch. So if you've got this kit, spend an extra bit of time having a look here making sure there's no sticky out jaggy bits because I've just twisted it off the sprue but actually it's come off really cleanly you'll see if I zoom in there's no um, 
no bits of spruce sticking out to get caught on anything. So that's that's really great. I mean, if you think about it, this is for sort of home hobbyists who probably you know they've made never might have never made a kit in their entire lives. So there's the screen. Now I'm gonna. I've seen someone make this online, and I don't think. Oh, there's a little fly. Oh, a little fly in there. <sighs> Go away. Right. Uh, and I'm not quite convinced of how they assembled it because what they did is they put in the internal TFT screen before putting on the external polycarbonate screen. And the reason I don't agree with them on that is that I don't want this to get any fingerprints on it because anybody who's ever sort of dealt with anything like that knows it is moida, absolute murder to get fingerprints off things like this. So I'm holding it by the edges, even though I can see it's got a screen protector on it. I do not want to mess with that. Um, so that's going to clip into there. That makes a lot of sense. And then this board's got to go in somewhere, but we can see it's going to go in that way because of the D-pad. So far, it's making a lot of sense like that. So I'm going to do the screen. That's going to be my step one. Your step one may vary. Follow your manufacturer's recommended steps if you've bothered to print the instructions. Unlike me. So that's the screen. Ooh. Okay, so it has an adhesive thing on there. It's just going to go boosh like that. Oh, I'm always worried now. Maybe you should be following the instructions. What worries me, you've got that part there come off, which is the bezel. Yeah, that's the sticky for the bezel, but what about the middle bit? Surely we don't want any sticky on that, so I'm going to kind of test it a bit. All oh, right, so that's just, that is literally a protector, that bit of 3M on there. They've stuck, the adhesive is, the adhesive pad is across the whole thing, but on the middle bit they've actually stuck it on the screen protector so there you go so that now should be a pure a pure screen so I'm going to stick that on there good so far great and it looks like it has potentially its own protector on the front it's got a very matte finish so I think there's a thing that we can peel off but before we do that let's pop this in and we know that this is going to go in that way because of that ribbon cable has to marry up with that part on the left that connector so that's fine in fact, let me just I can zoom in a bit now we don't need to be so distant you and I those of you watching at home let's let's all cutch up together nice and close so there's the screen protector of that again hopefully no dust in here and I'm limiting its exposure to dust I really am I want it just to be in and booshed okay it's not too bad but it does seem to be kind of catching here a little bit I'm gonna Hmm. Okay, it went in. It's a little bit, geez, it, it kind of bent a bit in a scary way and it wasn't like kind of going in. It's like, do I force it? And I did force it because it was already, if it was going to break, it was already at the point where it would have broken. So I'm going to put the buttons in on the assumptions we want some of those. And a bit like the Super Nintendo, they only go in one particular way round, which is very handy. Very handy indeed. Now I do hope that the uh, emulators have been configured properly. And if they haven't, it doesn't really matter so much because this has got a kind of brand new firmware as far as I know. So it's all, you know, ready to be modified because I really hate sometimes when they get the A and the B button run up mixed around um, because then when you're running with Mario, you're running and you're jumping is all wrong. Not acceptable in my book. Right, I'm a bit confused. We seem to have too many of something. Pop that in. in. That can only go in one way. And this, again, I'm thinking, it doesn't matter so much the way around it goes. It looks like it's kind of ambidextrous. So I wonder why you've got two of those. Might pop that one in the little bag. Maybe that's from hardcore gaming, you might wear it out. I don't think they're two different, you know, thicknesses or anything like that. 
And then we've got our PCB. Let's see the main board. I want to go somewhere like so. So there's room for the battery to be inserted and the speaker after the fact. So that's good. Let's just worry about the one thing that we need to do right away, and that's the screen. So I'll take my tweezers. Always with the tweezers. If he's a geezer, he's got a tweezer. I'm not even sure what that's supposed to mean. So I'm going to hutch it, cutch it, cutch it right up to the edge while holding that. So that's now as far as it's going to go. And let's boom, zoom right in so you can have a quick look. There's a white marking on that ribbon cable connector. I'll show you. Just pop it out again. Gently, gently, gently. See it there? Just there, the little white line. That's to tell you that it's all the way home. So it won't go in any further. And then I'm just going to push. Ah! No, no. At the, trying at the same time, push both ends of that clip in. That slid forward and that locks that in. And I think that's pretty much where it needs to be. Don't fuss too much over it. If it's if it looks about right, then it probably is right. I'm going to lift this up off the deck so I can just shimmy it around. Whoo! Look at that. I'm not too sure about the clear. Um, polycarbonate really because I don't know I don't really like clear stuff you think you ought to like it but nah it's not great I think um, I'd probably like to get a gold paint and spray the inside and see if it'll come out like a golden golden Game Boy of goodness screws let's get some screws chuck those back in the bag here they are yeah out the screws don't rip jiffy bags by the way you saw I just sort of ripped the jiffy bag I don't I don't collect all these millions of miniature jiffy bags like some people um, the problem is if you rip them sometimes you know, they sort of screw up into a ball and then your stuff doesn't want to come out at all and for this it looks like you're gonna need a teeny tiny screwdriver set so uh, I'm gonna search the back office and I have found one we're going to go for the uh, Phillips, Micro Phillips. I'm just going to put in a couple of screws and I'm going to zoom in and show you what I'm seeing because it's probably looking very disturbed to you. I'm just going to lift the board up. When you're doing it, lift the board up so it's in your hand so that all the buttons and stuff can drop back down. Otherwise, something's going to be crunched that you don't want to crunch. Right. So what I'm looking at here is pictures of screws. So it's kind of conveniently showing you where to put the screws. It looks like there's four on this side. And there's a whole mess of screws in the kit. So it's four plus summit else. Just kind of confused with something. Yeah. It's weird. Just look here, you see this on switch. It's weird how you've got such a massive rebate, but the switch is kind of on the edge here. I don't know if you can see that bit of focus, yeah? There's a rebate here cut out. I'm guessing that's for this uh, massive plastic thing. So that hopefully it'll work out, I'm sure, but it's just a bit of a mind, a mind bender right now. Yeah, that's fine. Look at that, that's fine. Bit of a mind bender. Right, come on, Andrew, focus and get the last couple of screws in. So it hasn't got massive performance this. This is no way going to be nearly as good as a Raspberry Pi or anything like that. I think it's going to be pretty much on par with some sort of like ARM Cortex type chip. So this is a chip that's not you know, designed to do any of this. In fact, I'll check the screen. It probably doesn't even have a screen driver. It's just driving it off a spy bus or something. But it just shows you the power it has where it's just emulating everything and driving the screen everything through uh, pretty much as if you know considerate emulation which is phenomenal now am i missing something in me kit look we've got this speaker but it doesn't want to sort of stick in there because there's no glue so i'm just going to put on me hot glue these are great by the way gas gas-powered 
hot glue guns. They get seriously hot. If you you know if you ever have a glue gun and you know when you're using it, it sort of cools down as you're using it, get one of those because they do not. They do not do the cooling down. And then we've got the battery. So while that's you know heating up, we could have a little play. Before that though, let me just check everything else. So we've got our shell. Oh! Remember I said port here? Look, it's obvious it's a micro SD card for the software. Oh, I suppose it probably doesn't have any software and that's something I'm going to have to download before it'll even do anything. But look at the size of it. It's so slim. I mean, that's gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, that's... I'm really excited. I hope, I hope it's got decent battery life because it's something that feels like you really would want to pocket it. It's got really good curves on it. You can just about see these curved features here and then curved corners. It feels lovely. It feels really sturdy. To be honest with you, it feels massively sturdy. Imagine once you get all those screws in, it's going to be like a tough little, um, tough little unit. Tenth anniversary O Droid Rev 0.1. It says here, look, designed by John Lee at Hard Kernel. They've done a good bloody job, guys. Well done. And um, you can see there, there's that port. It's a little port right there on the top, and that's why they've given you this bit of header, pin header there to pop in there. And that's going to be exciting, really. Because you know I've got things like the booby board and stuff like that and booby cortex. Can you imagine the sort of stuff I can get up to be able to sort of combine these things together using additional GPIO, stuff like that, and then just driving stuff? I mean, we've got a second screen here. Um, hmm, just checking that, not the same pinout. But again, presuming something like this, which could be I2C or spy powered, again, you could drive these off the additional IO on this stuff. That's why it's such an exciting platform. But without further ado though, let's see if our glue gun is starting to give us something a little bit usable. Um, while I rack my brains to think about where I might have another micro SD card, kind of want to pull one out of one of the dash cams in the car, but that seems like a bad idea. <laughs> okay, that's going to again take a while to heat up. Let's pop the battery in, see if it does anything while we're waiting. It certainly might not beep. The battery's going to go something like that. I'm going to flip that over gently, gently, because we're going to lose our on-off switch. Oops, battery fell out. Turn it on. Ugh. And it does. Ooh, can you see that? No SD card. But looking at the screen like now, just holding it, it's pretty good. It's not like one of those amazing, it's not like what you get on your phone, but it's definitely on par with a consumer electronics device. I'm very happy with that. I think. Woohoo! Very excited. Now, um, again, I'm trying to like curb my enthusiasm because I don't know what kind of games it can run. Every time I've seen it, it sort of seems to be running sort of NES games. So I'm like, hmm. What I would like to know though, if anybody's done a Pico 8 for it. I love the uh, idea of Pico 8. Um, and if you have a look at that if you haven't it's a kind of a virtual machine for writing sort of games on it the virtual hardware um, I've tried it on my phone and stuff but it doesn't really do it for me I feel it needs to be on a kind of a real bit of hardware that could support that oh I'm such a bloody idiot look the case holds the speaker in duh well I've got the glue gun now bloody Andrew you idiot Right, got a little blob there. Got the rope, the glue gun rope. There we go, got it off, got it off there. Right, just a little bit there. I'm just gonna push that down, that bit of glue gun. And you're saying, why are you bothering with that then if you don't need it? It's because I just wanna make sure it doesn't rattle. I don't want it to rattle, all right. So the first bit of glue gun glue is just a kind of tack to hold it in. And now it's held, it's proper glued. So that's good, we can turn off the glue gun. And don't worry, I'm gonna zoom in, show you what it looks like. It looks like that, a big old blur. And then it zooms in and it looks fine. Look, just a bit of glue gun there, a bit of glue gun there. Good, totally adequate. Let's put the battery back in. We'll turn that all around. So I'm just going to make sure that the wire here 
God, why is it all these bloody zooms today? It's tiring. Right, I'm just going to put the wire for the speaker underneath the PCB here. So it doesn't catch up. Ca get captured. Yeah, it's fine. Absolutely fine in there. Whether or not you want to see it, it's up to you. Yeah. Now, if, now I'm seeing it. I'm not sure I want to see it. <laughs> I'm just going to untuck it, but be careful. If I was smart, I would have pushed that into that glue while it was cooling off. Put the case back in. Just another few screws left and we're done. Looks like six to me. So as I was saying, um, I'm not sure what it can emulate. It can certainly emulate a NES. I don't know if, I'm pretty sure it, that's about the limit. I don't think it can emulate a SNES, but there is the potential that it can emulate a Game Boy or a uh, Wonder Swan or those sorts of things. Um, looking through here, I can see this speaker's getting slightly pressed down, maybe a bit too hard because it's wire got caught underneath that. Uh, see, there's a cross that cross thing that pushes it down, but I think it's fine. Again, stuff like that is easy to find, easy to fix, who cares? I imagine if this has got the capabilities I'm looking for as a kind of hacking machine, I'm gonna be in this a, a lot anyway. Cause what I'm not sure about is if I can re, actually, well, it's wondering if I could reprogram this from that, but clearly it looks like it's got a bootloader that's just relying on the ST. The fact that it didn't have the SD card, it wouldn't do anything, it means that they've probably already thought about that. I should think you can probably just put your programs on the SD card and away it'll go. So that's all of them. I've got one spare screw, Let's put that aside. And there we are. Oh, feeling, it is feeling good. It feels real good. I'm gonna take that out though. I don't think I'm gonna want that in it all the time. Especially if you're going in an airport or something, they will want to know why you've got this probe in it. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, no card. No card, but no noise. Right, so I'm going to go on the internet now. I think I have to because I need to get something to put on that SD card, but we'll look at that momentarily. I'm back, and you can hear helicopters. That's Donald Trump flying over my house. Right. Let's ignore him though, we're on more important things. This is the Odroid Go hardware block diagram. And look, it's fantastic. That's that module I showed you right there. 16 um, MIB, megabits, megabytes, flash ROM. The ESP32W Rover with antenna, ESP32. So it has got the ESP32 chip we've used so much before. Four megabytes of PS RAM and 16 megabytes of flash memory. So that's its RAM that it uses, and it's got built in 16 megabytes to hold its own firmware. So it's a USB to serial IC. So that's one of those chips. It's probably that chip we saw up there. Do you remember the one I probably misidentified as a charge controller? Although there is a charger IC. Hmm. Anyway, it's all part of that stuff. In fact, that the USB comes here, it has an RX2X uh, TX serial. So it's like an FTDI chip thing built in there. Then you have the charger IC with the lithium polymer battery, charges that up, and there's a six volt, two amp step down, going into there. It says step down, but isn't it not a step up because it's coming from 3.7, so it sounds to me more like a booster. Hmm. Or is it step down when it comes from there? Anyway, ignore that, don't worry about it. You've got some general purpose IO where you've got your D-pad coming in there, and then you've got six PCB switches. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six buttons. And then you've got an I squared S, right? It's a bit like I squared C, but it's I squared S, and that's a D class amplifier, and then it's a mono speaker. So that implies, though, that it's a digital to analog converter in there as well. So that's cool. So it's, a, it's an amplifier, but with a digital to analog converter. So it's taking a digital bit stream from here, and it's processing that, processing that and putting it out as sound, which is cute. Remember, I was saying about extendability, that's it there. There's your micro SD slot that's running the uh, firmware, and that's on Spy Bus, as well as the TFT screen and some of the expansion connector. So that's great. So that's tr well, exactly what I was saying. The screen and the micro SD slot, they're all being run off a bus, right? So there's no direct hardware in here for that. It's just running off its general purpose buses. 
And then the other part of the 10 pin expansion connector is the I squared S GPIO. So then you can use between SPI and I squared S, you can probably get quite a lot of uh, you know, general purpose IO going on and using external sensors, analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters. Does that make sense? Could you use that? I suppose you could. Yes, of course you can. Um, and I'm sure there must be an I squared C as well, but we'll check that. I squared uh, S is normally for um, audio. That's where I've seen it used before, but yeah, I could be a bit rusty on that. That's fine. I'm prepared to accept that. Right, so I have a, a 16 uh, megabyte card, gigabyte rather, card <laughs> that I was using on my Pi Tube. I'm not going to be using my Pi Tube right now. All I've done is copy some firmware ROMs onto that. Sorry, not firmware, NES and Sega Master System ROMs. So they're not actually firmware ROMs, they're just actually the game ROMs, because I think it's got already in it a built-in firmware. So we'll just put that piece of paper away, we don't need that anymore. And I'm just gonna flick it on now. So I'm hoping it does have some sort of firmware. And looking at it, ooh, it looks very much like um, a Raspberry Pi, if you've got the, um, whatever that interface is on the Raspberry Pi. Now something, uh, before I forget, um, when I was looking online, you actually, can get for this uh, an uh, Arduino, Arduino Sketch, I think they call it, that sort of ID, because it can run Arduino stuff on it. So they have lots of examples of people programming it up and you know, reading the buttons and doing Arduino-y type things with the IO. So that's really good. If you're into Arduino-y type projects and you want to make like a turtle or something or use the brains for something, you are in luck. They definitely have that already support it out the box. Um, the firmware, of course, though, for the ROMs and emulation seems to already be built in, so I'm guessing they, they know where their market is with this thing. And all you have to do is download from their website an SD card. It's like a blank SD card image with all of the game folders, and you pop the correct game in the correct folder. So, yeah, it's doing a good job of emulating that sort of thing you've seen on the uh, Pi before. You've got your speaker level there, and I think I saw this thing. Oh, look, there you go. See there? There's a volume. Off. Ladder, 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 off, ladder, 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 off. And then you've got your charge indicator. Not sure what this button does. But let's, I know I've only got game, uh, Nintendo, NES, and Sega Mar System games installed. I didn't have any other ROMs, but let's try that. So we're going to go to one that I'm familiar with. Could it be more responsive? Maybe. I mean, the pad feels really good, but it's not, it sort of seems to be moving between those at the speed it wants to move at them. Okay, I can live with that. Now apparently what it does, it loads this into the RAM. So you imagine it's reading that now. Even though it's only 256 kilobits, it has to read that into the memory onto here. So it's moving it from there into there and it's taking time because these buses aren't massively fast, but also it's doing dual purpose because it's running the screen as well at the same time. And I'm looking at it and I still can see a fleck of dust in there. Of all that care I took, oh well. So far, so bad. It hasn't actually done anything with that ROM. Let's give it a moment to catch its breath. It's definitely on. Turn the light off just to check. Yeah, I think it's definitely on. Hmm, so maybe it didn't like the old Castlevania ROM. Okay, finally put computing. They were very friendly, but less than helpful because their Odroid Go people had all gone apparently for the day. However, I had a look online on Odroid's website and there's a tiny bit of text that says if it gets into an unresponsive state, hold down the menu button, which I think is this one, and turn it on. Let's see what happens. And that should sort of reset it. Hey! So I think the problem was maybe it had a bit of an issue writing to the SD RAM or something. Again, I'm going to try that again. That was Super Mario World. Super Mario World. Oh, is that a beep? That was my phone. Let me turn that off while this is loading. We're almost there. And did it just do it again? That to me looked like it definitely did it again. Bum. Okay, let's try that again. This is, so that could be an issue, couldn't it? If there's a particular issue with certain ROMs, be careful. So I'm going to try just uh, low, oh, Roadrunner. There you go. I'm going to try load, Roadrunner. Loadrunner. I'm just wondering now. I think Roadrunner, I thought this. Ooh. Oh no, it is an actual Roadrunner. I thought <laughs> I thought it could be the the adventures of the th the 3D Roadrunner, whatever it was called. Right, let's zoom. Okay, we'll knock that off though, because that's not a game I'm aware of. So we need to try one that we played. Oh, did you see that? Ah, so I turned it on. It resumed state. So that's really cool. So you can just continue where you were left off. And that's absolutely amazing. I love that. 
because that's the whole thing that now just changes the game on these things because if it's if it's really simple that like when you turn it off it remembers the state it's the biggest bugbear I have with playing old older games especially ones that take a little bit more time like Zelda Ooh. it seems to sound a bit weird but it's not bad yeah I, I, I dig I dig that's not that's okay just notice there's no headphone port on here if you want to use it on your travels. They might have Bluetooth on here though, who knows? Yeah, it, you know what, it, it, it's fine. Sorry, I was getting into that. So I went quiet there because I was actually just playing it. It's really, it's really weird because the screen is so sharp. I'm kind of not used to seeing it. You know, you, you, you're kind of like, is this the NES thing? But I'm sure it's, it, it, it's definitely the sort of NES ROM because it's from my sort of standard little pile of test ROM. So yeah, this is really cool. It's like the screen, it makes it look really sharp. I guess it's kind of so tiny and you've never seen that game that size in a sort of Game Boy size screen. Yeah, a bit of Castlevania. Enjoy that bit tune. No, that's good. Absolutely playable. Looked like a bit of the edge of the screen was cut off there. All right, let's jump over to some Sega Master System games. Uh, let's see which I've got here. Ooh, Shinobi, a bit of Shinobi. Shinobi was a cracking game on the uh, Sega Master System. And it's, a, it's a system that's really underrated in sort of mobile and TV games. They just don't seem to really exist, do they? Oh doesn't like that but did you notice the menu button still worked there that was handy so if it does cock up at least you can get out of it dynamite ducks come on something work I mean if you've got a few different ROMs I guess you could try the different ones maybe it's more happy with uh, certain ones than others uh, oh yes <laughs> perfect I was just checking something here. Before we uh, go into that, let's remember I said that I think there was a membrane on the screen, the outer screen. Let's just have a little pick on the edge. Ah, there is. So it's up to you whether or not you want to keep that like a screen protector, but oh, look at the difference. Oh, yes. That is gorgeous now. Oh my. And the viewing angle now is much better. So it says press start. Oh, okay. It says press start button, it, but it's B, clearly. Mistaken. So we're playing Dynamite Dark. It's perfect, by the way. It's absolutely fine. This is one of my first and favourite games on the Sega Master System. So we're playing, we're playing, we're playing, we knock it off, we put it in our pocket, we go away, play on our phone for a bit, turn it back on. What does it do? Oh, it was straight into Dynamite Ducks, but it didn't remember the state on that one, did it? Hmm. Let's do a little test on that one, just a real quick test. I think we're, we're kind of done here, aren't we? While it's loading, future mods, I think I would like to put a um, headphone port on here. And I suspect you could fit one in. Oh, it's so loud, look at that. If you were really keen, I suspect you could probably put an I squared S chip on here and drive a headphone port. 
Oh, it makes that tiny little speck of dust now that did get into the screen look really bad. Don't know if you can even see it on your one. Probably not. It's just there. Something you could ignore. Something I've learned to live with. So, right, right. Let's just get the game started. Come on. Oh, it's because I don't have sound, is it? <laughs> right, so now I'm going to turn it off. You saw it was in the middle of the scrolling thing, and I'm going to turn it back on. Let's see if it can remember where we left off on that one. Mm, not really. So it remembers the game, but not where you left off. I did sort of read somewhere, though. The implication was there is a way of doing a save game, so I, I don't know. There's probably some button combination you can press. Uh, uh, apart from that bit of dust on the screen and the smears I've just started smearing I might just give it a coat in Glade or something, Glade polish and say that's it, that's what it's going to be like um, I'm really impressed with that, I think that's a great little buy, 10th anniversary O-Droid, works pretty well and if you've got your uh, NES Game Boy Color or whatever, Game Boy Game, Sega Master System, I think you're going to be happy with that, and I'm going to be happy because I've not really had a pocket Sega Master System solution, so there hopefully that's something that's of an interest to you, and you might go out and buy it. But oh, crikey, you forget how that sounds, those old chip tunes. Anyway, hopefully, you've enjoyed that, and we can uh, have a play with this in the future once I've modded it to do some external stuff using the kind of Arduino -y or native stuff. As ever, thanks for watching. So, I've actually done a bit of RTFM, you know, read the flipping manual. Ooh, sorry, bubble bubble. Just got to listen to the music. Uh, okay, now uh, what it says is that, oh, sorry. You can't not do that, right? You cannot not do that. It says go back to the menu. When you go back to the menu, it'll save the SRAM. So I think B means you can go back to the game. Let's see. See, B went back to where I left off. So I'm going back, back to the menu. So I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to turn it on in a moment. So I know um, I had a little bit of a mix up there, but it definitely seems that it can save the state properly. So if we push, where were we? I don't know, I suppose you have to choose it when you're doing B to go back. But let's okay. So put on Game Gear. We know we don't have any Game Gear titles. Push B. So hopefully B goes back to the last state, and you continue. Hooray! I, I'm looking forward to this. Being able to continue is a game changer, and it definitely does do it. Go get one immediately. Bye bye.